Good morning, Jeff. So yes, clearly markets are reacting to this in a very adverse fashion. I think that's completely understandable because what this situation is doing is putting the central banks under even more pressure this year. We knew coming into 2022 that they faced a very difficult balance. Tighten too quickly, slow the economy too far, tighten too slowly and risk losing control of medium term inflation expectations. So I think this is adding to the confusion. At the margin, higher energy prices are going to push that peak in inflation further out. But ultimately, I think the central banks are working with a relatively blunt toolkit here just as they couldn't solve semiconductor shortages, for example, last year, that were putting significant upward pressure on goods prices, nor can they solve higher energy prices via rate hikes this year. So ultimately, we do think that they will prioritize growth later this year over ambitions to bring inflation aggressively back down to target. But for our clients, this means really an environment of reducing tracking error. I think this situation remains extremely uncertain and history suggests geopolitical events generally cause short-lived market sell-offs. But until we know more, until we have more clarity really on the next steps here, I think this is an environment to go back to benchmark weight and wait to assess the implications for the oil price and the implications for the consumer. Given the, uh, the current inflation rate that we see in developed economies, how useful or otherwise is it to increase your cash balance? Yeah, I mean, clearly cash balances are being eroded every day. I mean, you have inflation running above 7.5% in the US. That is a very difficult environment to be holding cash. So I think as a very short-term hedge, the traditional safe havens do have a role to play. We've seen the move in Treasury yields. I'd expect yields to fall further on the event of more escalation between Russia and Ukraine. I think gold has a role to play in the very short term as well. And clearly some of the currency moves overnight are following that traditional safe haven pattern. I think the challenge here is that many of the short term hedges on a 12 month view are not particularly attractive. We still expect yields to be moving higher over the course of this year. Gold in that environment where it's negative correlation to real yields, I think looks like a trickier place to be medium term. So this is an environment to be tactical. This is an environment to use those safe haven assets on a short term basis. But I don't think you can be setting a portfolio allocation for the next 12 months and hoping that it's going to work in all weathers. Uh, Hugh, um, inflation, of course, is a backward looking indicator as well. But since we had the last prints, which were historically at 40 year highs in the United States, uh, and goodness knows what UK RPI is now because people don't even look at it anymore because it's so stratospheric, um, we have gone up on a lot of commodities. Karen's been looking at a lot of them at the wall. The oil price has gone up by a significant amount as well. Inflation's out of control, isn't it? I hear what you're saying about prioritizing growth over inflation, but it's out of control, isn't it? Well, I think there are good reasons for the central banks to be normalizing policy. I think they'll be looking at the signs from the labor market in particular and seeing strong wage growth, tight labor markets, record numbers of job vacancies and saying that now is the right time to be normalizing policy. But I think where the central banks need to be very careful not to get confused is that hiking rates now is going to impact inflation because it's not monetary policy that is driving the high levels of inflation. It's energy prices, as you say, it's goods prices. They're doing the bulk of the work in pushing inflation to such high levels. So the central banks are going to have to strike a balance. Given that they can only really control demand, their options on the table, if they want to bring inflation very quickly back down to target, are very limited. They have to shrink demand. They have to slow the jobs market aggressively. And bear in mind, they're working with this dual mandate, particularly the Fed. They're looking at full employment to choose to bring inflation straight back down to 2% would involve a significant tightening in the labor market, which ultimately I don't think will be something that they're looking to pursue this year.